Welcome back to Spotlight Over the City, you guys. And guess what? We have us an amazing plus one in the building. I'm going to let Wifey actually introduce her because, um, whoo, this is a yes, pleasure. Yes, so we do. I'm looking forward to it. How about we have all been on an emotional roller coaster for 2020? And guess who we have joining us today? We've got new music out, looking amazing. My favorite, Vivian Green, Green is in, in the, the building. building. Let's give it up. Man, what a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being a part of our Spotlight family. We are so excited that you have taken time out to talk to us about your new music and get us all caught up to date with what's been going on with Vivian Green, you all. Thank you so much again, though. So, so before we get started, I'm glad that you didn't hear Wifey earlier because she was singing actually your song, and I didn't want her to mess up your brand. I told her don't do it. <laughs> But because we do a segment called Name That Song, and so she used you as a song. I did. I sang Emotional Roller Coaster, and um, I think I killed it, baby. Mm. But anyway. I didn't, I didn't even hear it. I bet it was great. Okay. So, uh huh. Uh huh. So anyway, thank you for coming. So let's get into it. Yeah, let's get into it. I want to go straight to this new album because I started listening, and I couldn't stop listening. And I just want you all, you to tell us and, and all of your fans, what was it like working on this album during a pandemic? Um, it actually was a very productive <laughs> time. I have to say, uh, of course, the pandemic is, has a lot of gloom and doom in it. <laughs> so yes. not to take away from that, you know, and, and the tragedy in it and, and all those things and all the people lost, but... I personally was able to get a lot of work done, you know, and I was able to finish Love Absolute, honestly. So it was very productive for me and that, and that would be a positive thing. So. Yeah, that's that's what we've been hearing from a lot of people. We talked to yeah, a, a lot of people have been very creative during that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we talked to uh, V Bozeman a couple weeks ago. She was on the show, and same thing for her. She was just saying that um, she spent a lot of this time doing exactly what you've been doing. A lot of artists have been spending time really working and, and perfecting their craft. So um, it's been been good for some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a question from one of our viewers. Uh, one of our viewers wanted to ask, what made 2020 the year to release new music? What was your inspiration to do this album? Um, yeah, so um, I want to answer this question. <laughs> I'm, I'm really horrible with, with questions like this because, I don't know, um, when, when I make albums, right, it's, it's a very calculated thing. It's not like I have to wait for inspiration to make a record. And I think some people do do that, yeah. but I, I don't. So we knew it was time to put out a new album. I usually don't like, and, and this has not always happened, but ideally you don't want more than three years to go by, especially nowadays because you know the people get bored very quickly. They forget very quickly because the you know, the cycle of everything, <laughs> news yeah. and events, everything That's is so true. quick now that you have to keep people engaged. So you can't really take these long breaks. Um, and maybe some people can, but I, I can't. I have to be pretty consistent with putting music out. So I had an album in 2015. Yep. I had an album in 2017. <laughs> and so this one is honestly a little late. So when we started working on it, which would be the very end of 2018, we started to work on it, um, you know, we, we knew that we had to make another album. So we know, like, let's put it on there, no date, but we need to start working. Yeah. You know, um, and then I, then after that point, I'll pull inspiration from whatever I pull it from, but it's not like inspiration first and then make the album. So it just so happens that it took a couple of years to make the album. And by the time we were done and it was mixed and mastered, it happened to be 2020. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. That's perfect timing, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. perfect timing. So listen, um, you collaborated with your family on this album, including your sister and your son. Tell us what that was like. Uh, well, you know, um, I, I wanted, my, my sister wrote the interludes that are on the album. Yeah. She's, you know, she's very smart. Uh, she's a, a teacher and um, she actually um, is going to be a principal soon. <laughs> she Yay. So she's like fantastic. And I just want her to be a part of it. So I thought it would be good for her to to write the interludes because she's just a great writer. So, you know, it's my sister. We're 
barely two years apart. So, you know, we're like twins in a lot of ways. So wow. it's really nothing like, hey, do this for me. She's like, OK. <laughs> you know, so. Wow. And what about your son? Does he aspire to be a singer, too? No, well, he's not singing. He, that's it. He's on an interlude as well. So ah, yeah, OK. An interlude that we do before um, a song called We Are Everywhere, which is about the, the diaspora of the transatlantic slave trade. Wow. Uh, about slave soul that, that did survive the Middle Passage, and I kind of proceed to tell him like some of the major chords, and then the song starts, and so, yeah. So. <laughs> I love that. Keeping, it, keeping, it, keeping family involved is so important, especially during times you know, like I, this. Like, because a lot of times family can feel left out, you know, um, in entertainment. Like, if you're not, like, a manager or, you know, someone involved in the career, then it, it kind of, the family's kind of not involved unless they are. And yeah. so I, I wanted to involve them this time, you know, because usually they're not involved, you know. So. I love that. I love it, love it, love it. So you got to tell. It can be like a disconnect. Like sometimes I feel like family doesn't always understand what I do or how I, or how it gets done. And you know what I'm saying? So yep. to include them is really a nice thing. I love that. And, that, you know, I, I love the fact that Stan and I get to do this together. So, you know, we get to include each other in, in a, important parts of our days because of this. So I think it's really yeah, important. See, and like, but if one of you did something totally different, you, they probably wouldn't really understand, you know, what it is to do this. What so, it's like. Yep. That's true. That's <laughs> it true. is true. So yeah. I had a quick, I had a quick pop up question real quick. When you wrote, uh, when, well, when you sung that song, could you relate? Was it personal, uh, emotional roller coaster? Was that something going on in your life at that time or nah? Oh, yes. So, um, yeah, that was about the, 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 the heartbreak that, you know, put the crack in the earth. Like, that's what <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that yeah. one, you know, that first big one or just one big one, should I say? Um, yeah. So that's what that was about. And I was, oh, I, I think I was like 19 going on 20 when I wrote it. Wow. So, um, yeah. Wow. And then it came out a, a couple of years later. I didn't know it was going to be my first single. I didn't have a record deal yet when I wrote it. You know, I wrote it one day while I was jogging, just like the song says. And so, yeah, I didn't know it was going to do any of the things. That well, that was song was huge. Good. And, um, a lot of women would always be singing that song. Yes, so, indeed. I know why, every that's why word. I thought about it. They knew that song. <laughs> so I said that song touched on for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah, that song. I, I really got my heart broken. It was, it was brutal. <laughs> yeah. Let me definitely. tell you something. Those times, Vivian, as we know as women, those times can really, really, really be brutal. And to be able to express it in your music, it's got to be like relieving, you know, you know, like releasing something when you put it out there in your music. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it totally feel, feels good to purge in that way. In the yeah, so do you have a favorite song on this album? No, I have like half of it is probably like my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> do you I have... I have with like a favorite anything though, honestly. Like really? Favorite, favorite female singer, I'm going to name like 20 people. Favorite. <laughs> 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 you know, like, same thing with Mel, like it's like I'm... The only thing that I'm solid on is my favorite color is black. That's the only thing. <laughs> That's it. Black. Okay. That's what's Everything up. Everything else is going to be hard. So okay. every singer, I always have this one question to every artist. You have a one hour trip and you can oh, only boy. listen to one artist for the whole hour. Who would it be? One hour. I told you. I don't know. One hour. Uh, one She's artist. Not be able to answer that one she artist. She doesn't have a one favorite. One hour. It's not a favorite. It's just one hour, one artist, and you can't change that dial. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> That's tough, That's right? That's tough, right? That's yeah, like, tough. Like living or dead, you know? It's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, living or dead. It doesn't even matter who it is. That would depend on my mood. Yeah, it depends on the mood. Yeah, it, that's exactly like right. It depends on my mood, but yeah. you said living or dead. I would go with I'm gonna go with Ella Fitzgerald. I would like to ask Ooh, her. Oh yes. Yeah, you took it there. Oh, that's a nice long hour ride too. Yeah. That would be yeah, yeah that's a good one, Vivian. That's a good one. On me. <laughs> um, we got another question that just uh, came in from one of our listeners. They're asking, have you watched any of the versus battles? And if yes, do you have a favorite? And would you be willing to participate ever in a versus battle? <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Um, I don't know what the very first one was. because I, I don't watch it faithfully. I can say that. But 
um, Babyface is one one of my very favorite singer songwriters. Probably my favorite in my lifetime. Meaning yeah. that I have favorites that before I was born. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I really love him, and a lot of his music inspired me very greatly. And he wrote music for a lot of the voices that I was inspired by when I was a teenager. So um. Um, I had to watch that and, and Teddy Riley just growing up in the time of his music and it being a part of like the soundtrack to me coming of age and stuff. I just had to watch that. And, um, yes. I, um, uh, it, th there were so many issues with it. <laughs> I remember that one. There's so many technical difficulties. Like, oh my God, that like, was hard. Oh, this is happening. This is so crazy. Cause there were like so many issues with the actual, <laughs> yeah. how to do it. I think, you know, um, and, you know, quarantine was, uh, we were kind of just getting underway of entertainment in quarantine. So I think all those kind of glitches have been figured out. But I, the only one that I've seen since then is the Patti LaBelle and Gladys, Gladys Knight. Knight. Um, and I just caught wow. the tail end of it. So I didn't see the whole thing. So wow. that's my answer to that. Um, and why? Because, um, you know, they're two of my faves. So boom, that's why I watched that. Um, I think Versus is about singers who, um, artists who have had a lot of singles and because yeah. I have not had a lot of singles, I have to take myself completely out of any versus battle. Like I'm far, unfortunately until my fifth studio album, it's the first time I ever had more than one video and one single per album. So, you know, if I'm going up against somebody that had four singles from their first album, I'm already losing. Yeah. I already <laughs> had one. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, I get that. Well, I totally that, get I it. I just do not think I'm a good candidate for versus. So no, I don't want to do it. I don't have not thought about doing it. I don't think it's something that for me to do. So no, I totally, it. totally get that. Is there yeah. are there two artists that you would like to see do a versus? No, not really. Not really, right? <laughs> <laughs> Last question for me, and like, this I one is one of my favorite about. questions. When you're not writing music or singing, if, when it's nothing related to music, what is it that you enjoy doing with your time? Um, going to sleep. Yes, getting rest. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of people that said that on here. They like to just sleep. Yes. I love resting. And, you know, I don't always get the amount that I would like to. So I really am just so happy and rejuvenated when I can do that. I also love to work out. I'm yeah. Really it. Um, yeah. Well, oh, I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed catching up with you, Vivian. Um, I would like for you to take an opportunity now to, um, you know, tell all your fans and viewers and listeners of our show how they can support this new music. It is fire. I can attest to it. You all, please make sure you download her new music. It is so, so, so good. I like, um, I think it's love. Um, and that's, that one is my favorite, but uh, please get her music. And Vivian, tell them, give all your information out. Okay, so you can follow me on social media at I am Vivian Green. I just released my seventh studio album only two weeks ago called Love and All of the streaming platforms, all of them, all of them. Buy a physical copy if you go to my Instagram page at I'm Vivian Green directly. If you would like a physical copy, you can get it that way if you just click the link in the bio. But otherwise, it is available everywhere to stream all platforms. And my website is VivianGreenMusic.com. Again, my album is Love Absolute. Pick it up. Well, not pick it up. <laughs> stream it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get you. We know what it means. Remember those we, days. We, we can't pick, pick too much of nothing up no more these days. But I yeah, know. we can pick it up through streaming. So make sure you guys do just that. Yes. Because she's a wonderful person doing some wonderful things with a big old wonderful voice. Yes. So we appreciate you so, so much, much for the great energy, your great spirit, Thank and also you. your great music. Thank you so, so Thank much. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yes. Uh, man, and the next time, I promise you, we won't be talking about the D or nothing like that. That was... <laughs> That was, that was just one of them sidebar type of things. We normally don't go there. <laughs> Listen, you take care. <laughs> you stay so safe. Much. Yeah, definitely stay safe. Out there. Yeah, stay oh, safe. You too. You too. All right, we all love right, you. All you all go get our music. Y'all give it up. One more time for Woo! Vivian Green. Next up, man, Black Wall Street Black time. Black Wall Street. Um, I've been waiting for this for a while. We wanted to do a segment on Black Wall Street, you guys. In case you don't know what it is, we're going to talk about that whole thing and talk about how it relates to where we are now, PG County, uh, Maryland, and um, where we stand as far as Black Wall Street. I know, I know, I know. Let's go to a commercial.